How's it guys and welcome back to Ultimate Exotics. So in today's video we're going to be looking at a really cool gecko species known as the Pictus gecko. Now these geckos um, they have many other common names so it can be quite confusing. They've also been uh, known to be called the Madagascan ground gecko, um, the ocelot gecko and uh, the other one the other commonly used name is the panther gecko. Um, in this video though I'm going to be calling them Pictus geckos um, and that uh, the reason why we call them Pictus geckos is their scientific name is Pictus. So, or um, well, their species name is Pictus. So their scientific name is Paradura Pictus. So that is why we call them Pictus geckos. And that is the most commonly um, referred to name that I'm familiar with. So that's what we're going to refer to this cool species of gecko in this video. Now, this um, gecko comes from Madagascar. Um, which is a small island off the coast of Africa and um, They are just such beautiful geckos and they're easy to care for and hardy um, So in this video, we're going to just take a closer look at these guys We're going to teach you all about them teach you how to care for them and also explain a little bit about their breeding So let's have a closer look at these cool geckos. Okay, so here we have a adult pictus gecko and you can see uh, this one is a stripe phase and uh, this other one below here is uh, the normal phase and you can just see they're these beautiful rusty brown colors um, they've got cream colors on them uh, they vary in brown just very naturalistic looking colors which helps them blend into their natural environment uh, they are terrestrial um, they can they they can climb up um, uh, rough surfaces but not smooth surfaces and um, you can just see that uh, these guys, especially the males, they have these very um, enlarged skulls, these big heads and these big round eyes. They are nocturnal as well, so that, which means that they're active at night and not during the day. And um, this would be about their, their full size. So their max size is about 15 centimeters, which is about five and a half inches. And the stripe phase. And um, you can see it just has this beautiful, thick, wide, um, cream-colored stripe down their back. And um, what the, the stripe is, it's actually um, a dominant gene. So uh, when you breed a stripe to a normal phase uh, Pictus gecko, half the babies um, can possibly come out uh, with the stripe. These guys are fairly calm. Um, they are quite quick, so they might have like a short burst of uh, energy. So when handling them, just be careful that you hold them close to the surface. So if they decide to jump out your hand, they don't have far to fall. Um, and then in a bit, we'll also just have a look at how we keep these um, beautiful geckos. But just look at how cool this guy is. They're just such amazing geckos. And look how beautiful that female is. She is actually currently gravid at the moment. Um, if you look on the sides there, she has some eggs. Um, so we're going to pop her back uh, into the her back to her enclosure shortly. Um, where in the next few days or so, she'll probably lay those eggs. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the breeding shortly. Um, but they are very prolific breeders, um, which they've been very well known for. Okay, so the um, hatchling pictus geckos look quite a lot different from the adults. So I thought it would be nice just to show you some of the babies that we've hatched out here at Ultimate Exotics. Um, they're just really cute. They hatch out really small. Um, it's like a pea-sized egg that is laid and uh, has a hard shell and um, they come out really tiny but then they grow really fast. Um, we feed them a diet of mealworms as babies and um, they just grow so quickly. Um, they just do really well. When you, when you first see them when they first hatch you think, geez, how am I going to um, get these little guys going? But they just thrive. Eh? And then... Um, yeah, we just have these small little hides in the enclosure, so I've just taken the hide out. Uh, we have a couple of them in each enclosure, and they just love um, all getting in there and um, during the day. And they all squeeze in there. They feel nice and secure when they're nice and tight like that. Um, and then at night, they come out and, and feed and wander around the enclosure. But you can see how different they look. They have, um, have these bands, um, unlike the females, um, that have more of that reticulated pattern. Um, when they when they first hatch out, they they're more like banded. 
um, and then as they grow they start developing their adult coloration which is more of a mottled brown look but just look how cool these babies are at about three to four months of age you can start um, being able to sex pictus geckos um, this you can clearly see uh, the difference here we have a mature male and female the male is obviously the one with the stripe uh, he has a much bigger head but um, what you can notice is that at the base of his tail um, he has these hemipenal bulges and that is a clear sign of it being a male you can just see them um, at the base of the tail and the female um, she is lacking those completely she just has um, a smooth uh, tail but near her vent there's no bulges there and then like we like we mentioned the male does have a much broader broader head than the, the female um, so he's got this really big head uh, whereas her head is uh, you know just a normal size um, head so the care of these geckos, we'll have a look at the uh, setup a little bit later. But I would um, describe that they can be kept in a very similar to, uh, similar way to how we keep African fat-tailed geckos. Um, they are exclusively insectivorous. Um, so um, we feed them a diet of mealworms and crickets. Um, you can feed them also other insects such as roaches and smaller superworms. Just don't feed them meals that are too big um, that they'll struggle to consume. So... Um, what we do is, yeah, uh, you can also, um, it's very important, um, especially for the females, um, because they um, produce a lot of eggs, that you have a good calcium diet with uh, vitamin D3. Um, a good supplement like this one here um, is ideal for pictus geckos. It contains vitamin D3, it has the reptile calcium, and it also has a whole list of other added um, vitamins, which um, definitely play an important role in their health and well-being. Um, so a small dish with the calcium in at all times uh, must be available in the enclosure and then uh, you can pop the mealworms into that calcium dish, you feed them every uh, uh, mealworms a few times a week and then uh, as additional um, feed uh, we throw in some crickets which they really love um, so that's always always good for them and then um, another important thing is uh, you need to have a, a nice moist hide, they like a, a humid hide and that can just be a small container with a hole cut in the lid uh, that has some damp uh, peat moss in it. Just make sure it's not too wet, it must just be damp and that will help with the humidity. As these geckos are nocturnal, they don't need any special lighting. Um, so just a heat pad um, can be used and a hotspot needs to be at about uh, between 27 and 28 degrees Celsius, which is about um, 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then the cooler side of the cage can just be at room temperature. As long as they got that hot spot, they can then get to that warm side and then move away when they want to cool down to the cooler side of the cage. So that is an important um, thing that you need to keep in mind uh, when housing these Pictus geckos. But uh, I think let's go and have a look at their setup uh, just so I can give you a better understanding of how we keep these, these geckos. Okay, so this is how we keep our Pictus geckos. Um, it's a very uh, simple and effective way. It's in a rack system. And um, it doesn't mean that you have to keep your geckos like your Pictus geckos like this. There are more elaborate setups that you can use, um, especially if you're only keeping a few. Um, you can set them up in quite a nice display enclosure. Um, so we use a paper towel. It's a nice, simple um, and hygienic substrate, easy to clean um, and easy, easy to change. Uh, we then just have a, a water bowl with some clean drinking water and then the calcium bowl that we're referring to with some mealworms in. Uh, we then have a couple of hides uh, just to give them some choice. We keep um, two females and a male in here and um, this is our breeding group. Now like we said uh, earlier these are very prolific breeders um, and it can cause problems to their health. Um, so how we do it is um, because they can breed, they breed at a very young age um, but we make sure females, are, uh, they, they can start laying eggs at about eight uh, months old which is really young and quite impressive. Uh, but we wait till the females are at least 10 months before we start breeding them. And then after five to six clutches, they lay two eggs at a time. After five to six clutches, we then remove the male and that's the breeding season over. Um, and they might lay a little bit more after that, but because there's no male, they will eventually stop laying. Um, these are the, the hides that we we're talking about. Um, we found that we put um, a few smaller hides in there because they like to move in between them and just... Um, chop and change 
Um, I just want to have a look here to see that's the other female there. She's happy in her heart, so they each got a heart. Just trying to, trying to see if there might be any eggs. Let's have a look in here. This one looks like it's been moved a little bit. Oh yeah, there you go. And there we have an egg. There might be another one in there, but that's the hard shell egg. And you can see, like I said, it's very round, almost just like a pea. So we're going to set that up. Um, we'll put it in some moist vermiculite and into the incubator. And we'll incubate it at 28 degrees and it'll hatch in about 60 days. We'll get a little pictus baby there. So that's very cool. And then this female, she is quite heavily gravid and she'll be laying again soon. And pictus geckos will live um, between uh, six and eight years in captivity. And their breeding lifespan um, will be short because they're such prolific breeders. Some breeders even refer to them as chicken geckos because they just keep laying eggs and they don't stop. Like a laying hen. So yeah, it's just important to manage their health and manage their breeding. Don't just let them breed, breed, breed. Otherwise the females can deteriorate um, and they can take strain. But yeah, very effective, simple setup that works really well to keep these guys healthy and to breed. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about these incredible geckos. They're such an underrated species of gecko and uh, we hope to see more of these around and also we hope to see more morphs and amazing color varieties uh, coming soon. There are um, a few out there. Um, but it's still the early stages, but I'm sure in the future we're going to see some incredible pictus geckos. Um, and they're such an incredible species of geckos for those um, of you reptile keepers out there that are interested in keeping uh, geckos. Um, yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Um, please don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment below, and most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep well. Cheers.